You got it. Hey guys, Matt here, and today we're gonna take a look at the brand new course here at Gatewood Park in Cartersville, Georgia. It's another Sam Barfield design, the guy that brought you uh, Etowah and Deerfield, and it is chilly. 34 degrees the high during this round. Starting out right now, it's about 28 degrees. We have about 100 players out here. There were 100 signed up, and I, I think 100 played. And it is a beautiful looking park out here. Nice practice field area, really nice pavilion here where Sam and Barbara are set up to get everybody signed in. See Zach Andreessen there on the right, getting everyone signed up for the doubles, and it is jumping out at Gatewood this morning. Uh, brand new course, it's just tent baskets right now, no tee pads, no signs, but it's looking great, and the Barfields always put on a great tournament. Uh, a really nice spread here with fruit in the mini basket and this really cool rustic pavilion. And the Parks Department has done a really great job of making this a nice place to be on top of being what will eventually be a top flight disc golf course as soon as everything's completed. Uh, if you've ever played one of Sam's courses before, they're a little quirky and this one's no exception. Really excited to see how this one shakes out. and. Uh, Hope you guys enjoy watching. Come here, come here, come here! You sound like an old drunk. <laughs> come here, and I'll tell you. <laughs> y'all are crazy, crazy. Thank y'all though for being here. Thank y'all. That gum, I. I Mike Daines was talking about, oh, I don't know. It's going to be cold. I don't know if I'm going to be able to come or not, right? Well, look who's here. Mike's here and all y'all, right? So it ain't that cold. It really don't feel that bad right now, does it? <laughs> yeah. All right. But thank y'all for being here. Before I tell you anything else, I got to recognize three people that are here. Uh, and they're the ones that have built this course. You know, I'm already, I'm already heard some thank yous and all. Buddy, I have not picked up one stick. Or I'll take that back. I might have thrown one stick off. Uh, I have done nothing, nothing to build this course. These three guys right here, uh, Greg is the director of rec for Bartow County. Chris Patterson is the superintendent. He's the one that lives in the house. Don't knock on his door and ask for a disc, okay? Uh, and you're going to get that. And then Brett Bagwell I knew him when he was in the fifth grade, and I've not seen him for ever how long, 15 years, and all of a sudden I see him, and he's the one that has been out here, him and Chris that have done the work. Greg gets the credit, right? You know how bosses are. So give him a hand for that. They had no idea what was fixing to happen out here. That One, I won't say who, but he called Brax and said, are they really going to play this morning? So he came. And I know when he drove up, he had to think, these guys are crazy, right? But thank y'all, and thank them for doing this. You know, it takes all of us to have a I talk about all these people, but it takes all of us to have a disc golf course. So thank y'all for being here, okay? Do what? Oh, yeah, and Barbara, too. Yeah. All right. Uh... And then the other thing, tee pads. There are no tee pads. We've not done anything with tee pads. There's trip hazards. There's there's uh, vines. There uh, whatever. I've got two. There's a white stake and two white flags. Tee off somewhere close to that, okay? <laughs> All right. You're fixing to go 110 foot elevation change three times. That tree right there. How tall is that tree? You're fixing to go to the top of that tree and back three times, okay? Uh, right. I'll be surprised. I will really be surprised if we don't get another one out of it. Hey, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, Greg. Come here. This apple's frozen. Oh, let me have it, Sam. Give it to me. <laughs> I believe I can agree, too. I don't believe anybody saw how bad that was. That's all you had to do. Well, not that.
You get a three. Giving Sam some time here to tag all the players on hole one. I was lucky enough to film a few cards on hole one. I didn't have that luxury every on every hole, but it's about a 340-foot right-bending hole. Uh, the guys are trying to take some interesting routes here, but you kind of want to go straight down this path and then have it either sit down so you have an upshot or hook to the right if you can throw a forehand or a turnover through that gap. Now, I don't know all the guys' names out here, over 100 players, but I do know some, and I'll try to call you out if I do know who you are. If I don't, sorry about that. Maybe we'll uh, be able to talk later. But the guys are attacking the hole pretty well here for the most part. Of course, uh, it's cold and everyone's bundled up, but doing a pretty decent job. Scott here, I think, had one of the better shots I saw on one. Let's see what he does. Going with a backhand turnover and maybe gets a little lucky with those trees, but I think he found his way through. He might even got a birdie on that. So it's not a stunner of a first hole, but it definitely is a cool design and sets you up really well coming right off the parking lot so you can dive into the course. And you get actually got a really pretty view of the lake right now. Off to the right, I don't know that you'll be able to see it once the trees fill out for the summer, but pretty good shot there by Rob Gullick. It's a late tree. Looks like it sat down for him though. I think that's Jason Cummings there doing a very similar shot. And overall, Got a ton of guys on this hole, but I didn't want to cut anybody out, so we'll get to see a whole bunch on one. Flipping way over, and but even that's not danger towards the water, so you're not really worried about the lake on this hole. Maybe a little bit on uh, on three, but. Here's upshot to the number one green. You see it tucked up there on the right side. Guys pitching up and giving themselves uh, some putts, hopefully. And you see the green there. It doesn't have too much of a drop off behind, but it does drop off to the second fairway right there. So you can come in a little bit hot, but you don't want to come in really hot. Hole two comes down this hill. And there's some really big, beautiful rocks. You can see them kind of the bottom of the camera. And then I'm actually standing on them as well. And that's basically how you want to play the hole. You want to get it. Uh, watch this shot. This is really how to play it. Get that backhand turning right down there. And then a nice skip onto the green. And here is Jason banging a putt there, making it look easy. On hole three, you throw out across the water here and try to stick it in the hillside. Not a lot of water there in the winter. They let it really, really far down compared to how it is in the summer. In the summer, this is going to be a lot more difficult of a hole. Overall, the group putting some good shots on it. A lot of them kind of ending up left there, but let's see if we can see a good putt. Banging it in there. I got a feeling right here is where a lot of people are going to be putting from, where you kind of end up below the basket. Hole four is one of the most beautiful holes on the course. It's a two-part hole, sort of. Leon taking the forehand route, which I think is how I would play it as well. Stick it down that left side gap and then let it fade back into the relative open down there at the bottom. The backhand route is there but there are a lot of trees that could clip you off as you're fading down on the left. So Philip putting his right through there, and if you're gonna do one, that's about how you do it, but he does catch a late tree. So Andrew Bradley throwing, he's lefty, which sets up really nicely for this hole and sticks it down there. He probably has a putt or at least uh, just around circle two. And one of the most beautiful greens 
on the course is Alan Sandage with just outside the circle putt. And he bangs it on in. Justin Drage right behind the basket here. Uh, I hope I didn't make him nervous standing right behind there, but I was farther away than it looks. And if he had nerves, they didn't show because they go center cut right there. And you can see, like, this green is tricky. It's got a lot of trees even right around the basket. Hole five is a difficult uphill shot. You got some nice big rocks exposed. And uh, the green is pretty simple. It's relatively flat up there, but not too easy getting there. You got to go S curve backhand or forehand flex, either one. Jonathan Rollins here. Looked the good. I don't know. He threw a black disc. So, Jonathan, I'm not sure how good your shot was. You'll have to let the people know. This is uh, Landon Tucker, one of the guys that is one of the top-rated players, plays at Etowah and Deerfield a lot. And he laces one right up the middle, clips that tree there, but in a pretty good position for the three. And uh, Martin Young, one of our local pros here, one of the higher-rated players in Georgia, is going to lays a driver i think it's one of the few times i've seen him throw a disc that wasn't an m4 but gets it up there decent tree kick hole six is probably one of the most hotly debated holes on the course there's a leaning tree there with a green ribbon on it where there's some debate whether or not it should come down but sam has said it might not come down and if you are too far right that drops off sharply so uh you can't really go on that wide route off to the right and really the forehand line is pretty dicey as well it's there but you got to make sure to commit to it and it's just a beautiful green here drop you can see that drop off down to the lake is sharp but by the basket it's actually not too bad it's pretty flat hole seven is right bending shot probably like 250 but there's a lot of tight trees off the tee that seem to give these guys some issue but right there's about the line you want he's probably just outside the circle and this forehand line here is also probably very close to parked so if you hit that initial gap you're in pretty good standing if you hit a later tree as long as it doesn't kick far you're fine it drops off pretty sharp to the right again, uh, similar to six, but not quite as bad. Eight, they're calling this one the monster hole. It's uh, up and down, tons of elevation changes, and about 500 feet, if uh, I remember what Sam said correctly. It has been two, but I think just once so far. And the basket's up there on the hill. A little bit of a slanted green, but not too bad. I think the forehand might be a good play, but you really got to commit to getting it on the left side. It's a little more forgiving down there once you get off the off the tee. Hole nine is pretty straightforward. I think it's around 250, 270 foot shot straight ahead. You can take the backhand right gap or the forehand left gap. As long as it's settling down near the green, be in a pretty good spot. Taking that forehand line right here. If I remember, this is one of the better shots I saw. Yep, sitting there right to the right of the basket. He probably had a tap in putt. Hole 10 is another straight wooded one. Got a little bit of a fade at the end. This is Parker throwing. And threw it great, but since we have no tee pads, I think there's a cut tree down there that he almost busted it on. That's not a bad line, but that tight on the left, you can't really get away with it. John Store here, making it look easy getting through that gap, but it doesn't fade back the way you want until it clips that tree. This is Peter, and he peers it. This is exactly how you want to play this hole. And Nick, edited for the children. Nutley, uh, didn't quite get that one where he wanted. Hole 11 is going down this little access road here. Skipping off to the right, 
Stan Hula throwing a forehand down there. That's basically what you want, but he got it a little bit hot. It's a little bit long and straight. On this one, it's not a stereotypically hard hole, but you don't want to be right. Those woods over there are super thick. There's a lot of brambles and hard to get out of. Rob Gullet giving us a little frisbee flip and then throwing a turnover that would have been butter if you didn't clip that tree there. This hole is pretty tricky. Uh, you have this kind of dirt road that is the fairway for the most part, and you don't want to be left because it drops off and is super wooded. And then you don't want to be too right because it's also super wooded. Um, Scott right here is trying to take that wide turnover backhand line. I think he kicked back safe-ish, but it's going to be a tricky lie for him there. The pin is up here, up this road. I think it's about 380. Hole 13 here is one of the shorter ones. It's kind of an ace run, but you do have some trees to contend with, as you will on every hole. And overall, you can just kind of run straight at it. I think it's about 225, 230. But it does drop off sharp behind, so if you play it like this right here, that's how you want to do it. Mm. Sitting down right by the basket. And Matt here also put it pretty darn close. 14 is a big downhill crush, and people seem to either kind of love it or hate it from what I saw. <laughs> Mike Dames here throwing. And he saw that one off inside a little bit more than he wanted to, but I bet you he got up and down. And this is this is how you play this. I don't know this guy's name, but he threw two great shots when I was recording on uh, two and this one, and they were fantastic. Kind of, kind of uneven green here, but not too bad. It's relatively open around it with just a couple trees. Nice putt there by Jason. And I don't remember this dude's name. I played with him at Edwards Park a couple weeks ago, and he's very good. And he's about to drain this putt. AJ throwing here on 15. 15 is one of the more challenging holes on the course. You need to stick it up in that gap right there, and then the green's a little bit uneven. Nathan Lindler's crushing one right here. Thought it might be a little sawed off on the right side, but it faded back and was more or less perfect. And Grayson there putting it right in the middle of the fairway also. This is Adam Martin going forehand. And he turns it over a little bit, but as long as he doesn't kick off in the left too bad, I think that's going to be all right. Another bit of crush on the right side. A little like it might be a little dicey, but rolls back to the middle of the fairway. He's going to have a nice upshot. This is looking back at the tee for 15 from up around that bend where a lot of the guys were landing. Andrew Bradley just pures this line and sticks one up there. There's Zach tapping in. That was very nearly a great putt. Really nice run there. And I think this is Justin Drage throwing for two here. I think that's what they told me. It might have been for, for a three, but I think it was a two. Just, just short. On 16, it's a big hyzer shot. Very tempting to go very high and wide there, but the line is not that forgiving. As you can tell with, with those shots there. See how Martin handles it. I think he might have clipped a tree late, but he's down there. And it's landing. I was landing going to throw it. Very high and very hyzer. But he got through pretty well. I think if you put on enough hyzer, there might be a line there. And Jonathan, very similar line, not quite as high. And he's he's got a look, but not probably as close as he wanted. 17 shot. I would probably play it like this guy is here. 
get the forehand into the basket it, it's a right bending shot but it does drop off sharp behind it so you want to land a little bit short that one was looking great before he hit that tree right there that's a good line and we got a cool like thumber shot there and i never did find out if that one sat down but if it did he crushed it and this is the green you can see how it's pretty flat right there by the basket but it drops off dramatically towards the water behind it now we're on to 18 which is another one over the water up the hill and that's not a terrible spot to be right there on this one you can really commit to it on the right side and i think that's kind of the play right here he probably wants some more fade but looking pretty good i think that's james neal putting that one in the circle and that one was looking great it just didn't come back this is another one where in the summer the water will be on the fairway there you can see that area down in the flat that's all going to be wet but gorgeous view of the lake right here one of the prettiest areas on the course and this is looking back all that down there is going to be water for a lot of the year cool putt here starting over his head and he makes it now we're on to 19 which is a little up and down lewis is going with this wide line i'm not sure how he ended up but it got through longer than I thought. And it kind of spits you out into an open area with road long. I would guess that road is OB, but there was no OB today called. Trying a forehand here. A little more height, that would have been nice. And this is the green for 19. See, it's pretty forgiving. I'm standing on the road, which will eventually be out of bounds, but about 50 feet past the pin. A hole 20 is another pretty challenging one where you start through this gap and you got to get a little bit straighter than Nick did there, but you can go backhand and bend it like John's doing here. Or I think you could go forehand and push it through. I think that's actually the 11 fairway, push it up through there and come around, but there are a lot of trees near the uh near the pen as well <laughs> let's see how parker parker handles this one soft forehand but he got it out there pretty good i think he'll there be in a decent nice. position to at least get a three nick showing us an area that's probably going to be out of bounds during the the regular season once it's permanent but not today and can we see a nice long putt oh just missed let's see if parker can put one in for us here yes he can i think that was a three for him and really good putt john also converts on i think a three there really good look at that one also and Nick puts in as well. So everybody, in conclusion, I just want to take the opportunity to thank Sam and the Parks Department again and all involved in the design and creation of the course. It really is amazing how lucky we are to live in a place where we have gone from having essentially no courses in that area. Uh, the closest ones being like White Oak, Oregon Park, and then the Rome courses, which some of them are even very new, to having three high quality courses closely grouped together so the game is growing quickly the community is growing quickly and it's been a pleasure to get to know a lot of you guys uh, thanks for you know for the most part being either polite or ignoring the fact that you were being filmed uh, if you had any rude comments you at least wait till I was out of earshot so that's much appreciated and I want to congratulate all the winners in advance Andrew Bradley won that sweet lefty shot got him a 50, 61 out there and on the couple shots I saw, he uh, was really working off the tee. So it sounds like he probably put it pretty good, too. Uh, Matt Zolich in the over 40s got a 67. Congratulations to him as well. Stan Hula also did a 67 to win MA60. 
and uh, I don't know who S. Smith is, sorry, uh, but he also shot a 67 to win in intermediate. So uh, 61 and then 67 is to win the other divisions. We only had four divisions out there today, but hopefully a whole lot more next time. And so thank you guys for everything. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hope I got everybody on the video at least one time. I tried really hard to, but if not, I apologize. And uh, maybe I'll get you on the next one. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you out on the course.